Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I take my uh, rectangular flyer, which crashed, crashed in a previous video. We've made some changes and we'll see if we can get success with a second attempt. Let's get to it. This is my square foam flyer. I'm going to put a card up here for the video on this. I made two versions of this. It's 20 inches square. It's 3 16 inch foam board, small electric motor, two servos for ALR controls. And you'll see in the upcoming video of how this thing flies, it flies extremely well. I'm even using this as a trainer airplane. It flies that well on three channels with the elevons and the throttle. It, 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 it just shocked me. I had no idea something like this would fly this well. It just doesn't make any sense looking at it. So uh, just to continue along the experimentation, I said, what happens if I take this, instead of a square, I make a rectangle shape like this. And so we'll show you the video of this with the first iteration of this. It did not turn out well. Let's take a look now at how this airplane flies. This is my first attempt at a design of an RCA plane with an absolutely flat wing, the square flyer. Uh, it flies great. It's like a trainer. I just couldn't believe how well it flew. So why not try this with a plank? Wing cement about 40 inches, about 9 inches in um, width. And the first attempt was a complete disaster. You can see I get into a pilot-induced oscillation. The wings fold and it crashes. Here's a view in slow motion. This is a recap of building the plank fault flyer. <clears throat> the wingspan here is 30 inches. I later added uh, five inches to each side, just a little bit greater wingspan. <clears throat> Absolutely normal components, HS55 servos, and a pretty powerful Park um, uh, E-Flight uh, uh, 350 motor. Marked out the ailerons. Again, just guessing the size. There are no plans for this model. Just whatever looks about right probably will be right. When you cut out the uh, elevons, make sure that you uh, cut a little bit on each edge so they don't bind and level them near the uh, where they connect. I use scotch tape hinges. <clears throat> the motor mount is just uh, here with room for the receiver and battery, a cutout for the wires to go inside the compartment. And here the servos are in their little wells. The motor is mounted, elevons in place, as well as a vertical fin. So this is the original one that crashed. After the crash, I brought it back for some repairs. You can see the weak point was a fairly narrow distance right by the root near the elevon. That was the failure point. No huge surprise there. Blocked it up on blocks to do some repairs. Didn't have any carbon rods, which is really what you need on something like this. And I just uh, elected to double up some uh, foam board spars, top and bottom, to see if that would add strength for a test flight, just to see if this could work. This is the underside of the um, plank. And the other thing I did was I greatly reduced the control throw to about half of what it was to try and prevent the pilot-induced oscillation. With the test flight of the first version of this, I very quickly got into a PIO, which is a pilot-induced oscillation. That's where you're pulling back, pushing forward, and you tend to get out of phase with the way the aircraft is working. It's, PIOs are not a problem with well-designed, stable aircraft. In this case, looking at the video and thinking about it, the distance between the elevon controls and the front of the airplane with the motor was just very short, which just led it to be twitchy or unstable in the pitch with the pilot-induced oscillation. All you can see, <clears throat> the wingspan, I added 5-inch panels on each end in addition to the 30-inch width of the foam board. 
The length of the wing with that severe pitching up and down, it just caused the wing to fold at a weak point right along here. So that, that happened. So I looked at it, looked at the video and I said, well, maybe we can give it one more try. So clearly what we have to do is reinforce the weak area. And I added spars on the top and the bottom of the wing. So it is, it is strong enough. The wings are not gonna fold in any future flights. The other thing I did through the controls of the computer radio is I reduced the throw of the elevator. So instead of going up this amount, it goes up about half as much. I think by having a reduced throw, <clears throat> it will prevent me from deliberately over controlling if it gets into that situation. Now there are some unknowns. You'll notice that the spar here is gonna block some airflow over the elevons. Uh, how that affects everything, I have no idea. So what we're going to do is give it another try. <clears throat> we're gonna make sure that it balances. The center of gravity is uh, located here 25% of the way back. And um, we'll see if this approach, reducing the um, elevon throw and having the spars here, if that will improve the stability, the pitch stability of this rectangular flyer. Okay. Let's roll flying pro. Yes. Cool. All right. All right. So for a second time out to the field, we gave uh, four attempts. This is the first one, complete disaster. Number two, not much better. Then on the third one, good hand launch, and all of a sudden the plane just flew. It was absolutely smooth. Just for the reduced throw, I did not have the amount of control that I really wanted to have, but got it around, kept it within sight of the field, and ended up, ended up with a very smooth landing. Yep. Not quite sure what happened to the fourth one, but you can take a look for yourself. So we had a couple of crashes on this, but you can see that we did have a good flight. I had um, dialed down the control throw to about 60% to avoid over controlling. I had just enough control to keep the wings level, but it was surprisingly stable. Uh, on the flight after that, it crashed right after takeoff. I think what I realized with this thing is they're just due to the nature of the design, the closest of the controls to the front, you don't get a second chance if you get out of control. There's very little room to recover once you get into an unusual attitude. The other thing is for the spars, you've got to use carbon fiber rods for the spars. The, the foam is a good stopgap measure, but not a long-term thing. But it, when it flew and it stayed within its performance envelope, it handled surprisingly well. So. We'll do some more thinking about that and see what the next steps are. So we're literally just back from the field for the test flights of the rectangular flyer. I've put the card up earlier for the first version, which just crashed instantly. What I did on this one is I had uh, foam spars to make it a little bit stronger and I greatly reduced the control throw. Also, uh, we met Leo at the field. Uh, Leo was, the flights would not have been possible without his hand launches. I realized this thing really has to get a boost to get it going on the initial ones. It doesn't just float along like the square flyer. But we had success with the flights. You saw that flight that was absolutely stable. I was amazed. And then there were some crashes with crashes at the end. What I am taking away from this plane is the distance between the control surfaces and the center lift is so short. It's just an inherently twitchy, potentially unstable design. What we would say with the real aircraft this rectangular um, flying uh, model uh, wing has a very narrow operational envelope. When you're in the envelope, it flies fine, it's controllable. Once you stray out of that envelope, you're in an uncontrollable regime because of the nature of the control surfaces, the length, a bunch of other factors. Once you get out of that control zone, that stability envelope, it's very hard to get back in. You just can't quickly do that. So when you design airplanes, you know, things like long tail moments, sufficient tail area, it's like the feathers on an arrow to give it stability. So as it strays out of its normal operating environment, it can recover. This one, you just can't recover anytime soon. Once you get nose down, there's just not enough control authority to get it back up. 
So what I wanted to point out was the original version that crashed on the first video had too much control throw. I greatly reduced the control throw on this. And when you see it fly, I'm literally at full control deflection, just barely getting it around. It flew, but I just had just enough control authority, but it was flying fine. But I don't have that extra oomph to recover if it gets out of the envelope. So it was a useful experiment. I'm glad that I did it. I've proven between the Light Ranger, which the card I've shown, my square flyer and this, that flat airfoils do fly. You just want a little bit more distance between the um, thrust line, center of lift, and the tail, surf tail surfaces, the elevons, to make it fly. So I don't anticipate doing another one. If I were to do this again, if you want to try this, carbon um, fiber tubes for sure for the spars. Forget the foam spars. That was just a silly workaround. And give it a good thrust when you launch it and then um, good luck with flying it but you can see that it, it can be made to fly. The launching. <laughs>